Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. I've got an unboxing for you today. This is the Pilot Prera. This pen was actually a gift from my wife during the ink vent period. So we're doing the first impressions on this today. Comes in a nice box, nice plastic box there. She actually bought this from a stationery store here in Australia called Office Works. So it was locally purchased. Looking at this box though, you know, fairly standard. We can see the pen through there. On the back, we've got the advertising stuff. Nothing really exciting, is there? I'm just going to go off camera and I'm going to take the pen out of the box. So in the box, we had some use and care guide. There we go. Pop that to one side. We had the pen and the cap. Let's pop that together. Just going to tip that label off though. That annoys me with them flapping around. Oh, yep, yeah, snaps on. And there was also a pilot ink cartridge. I'll pop that to one side. Let's take a look through the pen, shall we? So we start at the top. The top, it's just flat. Got a little bit of a line around just to give a little bit of interest there. Silver coloured. Come down to the clip. The clip, yeah, fairly stiff. Not a problem to me. I don't really use clips. The only time I really use it is when I'm using my Gale and Nether Folio, just to go over the holder on the inside of that. The cap, we've got, about the, uh, yeah, I would say it's tapering out till we get near the bottom of the clip. And from the bottom of the clip, it seems to be the same width. Inside this transparent cap, it looks like there's, I'm going to say it's a white liner. Hopefully that's there to prevent the pen from drying out. Not sure what I think about that. Looks all right though. But when you see the transparent nature and the black here of the end, you wonder, could they've made that black to match what's on the end of the pen? At the bottom there, we've got this very wide silver coloured area. Now, it's got to be inside the cap because there's no join that I can feel. So we've got that and we've got their Prera. And then on the back, we've got Pilot Japan. We've got a metal ring going around the bottom of the cap. And then there is a very noticeable drop off to the body. The body, fully transparent, goes all the way down. Then at the end, looks like this is either glued on, certainly doesn't move. We've got a silver ring, then we've got this black end cap, and that's also flat. Let's take off, let's take off the cap. It pulls off, very, very stiff. Now I'm guessing that might get easier with time. That comes off, it reveals a transparent section. Just let me fetch in my pen rest just to make this a little bit easier. So we've got a transparent section there with a grey feed on the inside. If we take the cap off, here we've got a pilot nib. I'm going to guess this is a number five size nib. I will pick it up in a second and have a look. Very simple looking nib. Let me just take a look through my loop. So on the nib, underneath the breather hole, we've got Pilot, Super Quality Japan, and then at the very bottom, we've got M for a medium nib. Also got a sticker there to tell us it's medium. When I start using this pen in anger, I will take that label off. I don't like them stickers. Very personal choice. I know there's a lot of people who do. Let me just pop the pen back together. All in all, it's a very simple looking pen. It's a pen that a lot of people have recommended for me. So it's been on my pen list for ages. And then obviously my wife, when she was looking at what to buy, saw it on there and got this. Let's swap over the view and do a size comparison. I brought in my two standard pens. So it's a Pilot Metropolitan, the Lamy Safari. Doesn't this look a baby compared to them? And I always thought that the Pilot Metropolitan was short. I wonder if this is aimed more at the pocket pen market. 
that's something when I do my longer term testing, I can look at that, maybe compare it to some of my pocket pens. Let's take the caps off and look at these unposted. Unposted, that Pereira, still the baby of the bunch, isn't it? A lot shorter than the other two. If we look at the nibs, this is a number five nib on the Pilot Metropolitan. Very similar in shape and size to what we're seeing on the Pereira. But I've got to be honest, I do like the decoration more that I'm seeing here on the Metropolitan. It actually makes this Pereira look quite plain, doesn't it? Then, of course, we've got the standard Limey Safari nib. I'm going to post these, see what they're like posted. Posted, very similar story. That Pereira right there in the middle, the baby of the bunch. What I'm going to do is unpost the Pilot Metropolitan. Compare that. And yeah, let's unpost the Limey Safari, shall we? So, unposted the Lamy Safari and the Metropolitan. Yes, they're a little bit shorter, so that hopefully means that posted this Pereira will be a nice size. I'm a bit concerned using it unposted, but we'll look at that in the writing sample. I'm going to step away from the desk, I'm going to clean out the pen. When I come back, we'll ink up the pen, do a writing sample, then I'll give you my first impressions. So I've given the pen a good clean, so I've rinsed out using a blunt nose syringe made sure that I've got any junk out of here. It's got these four agitator balls. That may annoy me. It may be something I have to try and remove them at some time. Used a bulb syringe to clean through the nib. Let's pop the pen back together. There we go. So that's back in. Let's move that plunger all the way down to the bottom and let's put some ink in it. So the ink I'm putting in here, with it being transparent and white and black, I thought any color will do. So I'm going for Diatramentis Cherry. This is a scented ink. As you can see, I don't use it very often. I'm hoping it might look nice in this medium nib. The main reason I don't use this is I've struggled to find a pen that I like it in. Now let's take off the cap. Nice wide opening. In goes the pen. I'm hopefully going to get this so you can see what's going on then. I'm going to twist that up. Didn't get much ink in, I'll go down and twist up again. Not a lot more, but it'll do for now. So we've got some ink in there for testing with. I'll just clean this off. As I was filling the pen, you could really smell the cherries coming out of that ink. So here we are. I say it looks like we've only got half a fill, but it'll do for what I'm going to be doing testing this. So unposted, Definitely not usable for me, too small. Might be all right for, you know, maybe a couple of words, but for anything more than a couple of words, I'm going to have to use this posted. So we've got here a Pilot Pereira with a medium nib. Now remember, this is a medium Japanese nib, so it's going to be tending more towards a Western fine nib. My wife, paid 70 Australian dollars for this. The ink, De Atramentis Cherry. Quite like the colour of this ink. I say the problem is I'm struggling to find a pen for it. And, you know, yes, I know I've only wrote, what, five words. It's all right, but I don't think I'll be using this ink in this pen again. Drying times. There's media. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Dry after 30 seconds. I'm going to move the mic down to the page and write a sentence. Yeah, that's all right. It's it's certainly not a rough nib. I won't call it a smooth nib. Got that nice tactile nature to it. Let's look at line variation. So we go, there's no pressure. I'm gonna add some pressure now. 
very, very little in the terms of difference. You know, this nib feels very stiff. No pressure, with pressure. No pressure, with pressure. Can hardly see the difference there. Flow test. Not too bad. See, not brilliant, but not too bad. Keeps up well. You could hear more of the feedback there on the nib though, as I was doing that. I'm not sure if that came over on the mic because the mic wasn't pointed towards the page. So what are my first impressions of this pen? I'm in two minds about this. So a lot of people, when they were recommending this, were saying it's a good starter pen. At 70 Australian dollars, this is not in my mind, a starter pen. You know, a starter pen is more like $30, $40. This is that second, even third pen you might get. That's the sort of price. And I think for $70, there are other options available, which I would look at first. I quite like the way it writes. Yes, there's a nice bit of feedback. I like that tactile nature when I'm writing. I don't actually mind the line because I know, although it says medium, I know it's a Japanese medium. I see... Some nice bits of shading coming through in my writing. Not a lot, but I can see it there. It dries quite quick, so in that respect, it's going to be good for note-taking because I can quickly turn my pages. You know, some of my wetter pens, I have to wait a minute, even two minutes before I can turn the page. So if you're trying to do a big note-taking session, that can be quite a pain. The pen is small. I say, unposted, it's unusable. Well, nearly unusable. You know, as you can see there, I did manage to do these bits with it because there were only, what, four lines. But I wouldn't want to be trying to do this for more than a couple of words. Posted, yeah, it's a nice size. It's a nice weight. It's not too bad. So that's where I'm wondering, do I need to put this into the pocket pen category? Which would be interesting maybe to do a showdown of this and, say, the Quaker Sport. That'd be quite interesting. And I think the Sport, for, again, I'm going off memory here, I think the Sport is quite a bit cheaper than this. Let me just get my list of prices. Yeah, I've just checked my list of prices. The Caveco Sport is half the price of this. So that would be an interesting comparison. You know, the same we're looking at, the same rough size, the same type of family, but different manufacturers, and also the difference between a European and a Japanese nib. I'll make a note of that after I've finished recording. All in all, I think this is going to be an interesting pen to do, as I said, the pocket pen one, but also maybe to do an, an update to my beginner pens or starter pens and maybe include that and my thoughts on that, comparing that with the Metropolitan, with the Lamy Safari, you know, and maybe one or two other of the lesser expensive pens. Still glad it's there though. Still enjoyed writing with it. You know, I know I'm sounding quite negative, but I'm, it's not. It is a nice pen. It's just, I think it's an overpriced pen for what it is. So these, it's my first impression of the Pilot Prera with Diatramentis Cherry. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got a Pilot Prera? What are your thoughts on it? Do they mimic mine or are they very different? Please drop a comment down below. I'd love to get a conversation, start getting other people's opinions about this pen. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.